Okay, so for today's practice, uh, the players that will be out will be uh, J.P. Holtz with a quad, Thomas Ives with a glute, uh, Lachavius Simmons is in the concussion protocol, and then Roquan Smith with a groin uh, that happened in practice. Uh, Jimmy Graham, Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack, and Danny Trevathan will all be load management today. Okay, And then uh, back today at practice, we're going to slowly ramp these guys up and be smart with their reps. We'll be, and they'll all have different plans um, by person. Is uh, Demir Bird, Michael Joseph, uh, Robert Quinn, Vidara, Desmond, Trufant, and Artavis Pierce. And then with everybody else, there's no changes. Um, and then today we'll be working on, on backed up. Today we'll be working on backed up out there at practice. So with that, go ahead and fire away. That's a long list. Uh, how are you dealing with that? And with all the attrition on the offensive line, how much adjustment have you had to make to practice plans? Yeah, no, it, it's um, – I guess the very first thing is, number one, we understand that we're in training camp and – these, these, you know, some some years are uh, you get fortunate. Other years you have a, a longer list, but it's not like we just understand we got a lot of time, and this is where we're at. And then the next guy steps up, and then what we got to do is just make sure that with wherever your numbers are at, we got it. That's where like the coaching comes in with the the volume and the scripting, and just being smart with that, uh, and and making sure that we do everything the right way. And and I I think that even yesterday, you know, you got you have a couple guys that. You get the names, hey, listen, he's got this, he's got that. You just got to be able to adapt and, and make sure that you're uh, you're doing things the right way. And I thought our guys did that yesterday. With Roquan, he's obviously had a good camp, looked good yesterday yeah. before that happened. Uh, what's your level of concern on the groin? Uh, again, it, all, all the soft tissue injuries like that, they're all a little bit different. I, I think he's going to, you know, they're working through the timeline on that. I, I, I'm i not, I feel better than, than worse, I would say, with that. But I just don't have a, they're working through the whole timeline thing. So. Here's is uh, hamstring. Yep. True was thigh. Yeah, we saw Doug Peterson out there yesterday. Yeah. What his visit was like and, and just kind of the, the whole way it came together. Yeah, no, it was good. You know, he'll he'll be out there today as well. Um, I think, you know, anybody that knows uh, Doug and I have a good relationship. Uh, we worked together for, for three years in Philly and for three years in Kansas City. Um, our families are close and uh, – uh, we always see each other out at Tahoe, too, so we get to kind of hang out there and play some golf. But it's just great for, you know, I think for, for me, it's nice. Uh, even when we get off the field, he comes in and uh, we watch some tape, and then we just – it's good to just talk uh, head football coach stuff, and I like listening to some ideas and thoughts he has, whether it's practice ideas, um, schedule ideas, uh, game day stuff, you know. So it's just, I think for me, it's part of that continuing ed. And I respect who he is and how he does things. The guy won the Super Bowl. And uh, it's just, it's nice to have a friend here that, that can, uh, and he wants to, it helps him out too, right? You know, he gets. What, what energizes him about being here as well? Yeah, I, well, he, he knows people here. He, he, he uh, there's some coaches on our staff that he knows. Obviously he knows some players. And I think when you're when you're out of football, uh, I think this is like I think he told me this is the first time in 34 years he hasn't been in football. That's that's a that's crazy for, you know, a lot of ways. And so now it, it allows him to get the juice going and be around football. And I'm sure this won't be his only camp that he shows up at. Jeff yeah. Peterson had the full experience just a few years. He's had the full NFL experience. Yeah. How much does that or does that help you? Kind of keep things in perspective at this point in your career. It does. I, I think you know again. Doug and I, uh, not only were we on the same staff, but we, we worked hip by hip, hand by hand for like every practice for six years, you know, in the roles we were in. So um, it's then we were, you know, he goes to Philadelphia as the head coach. I'm in Kansas City and then I come here. And so there's been that separation. So it's always nice to say, OK, when you went to Philadelphia, what did you change from Kansas City and what did I change from? And then you just kind of talk through the whys of it. And, and then, of course, every now and then we bounce some plays off of each other, and we still, uh, you know, we're, we're still a little bit pissed off at the fact of what he did in 2018 coming in here like that. But I'm curious, man, does, does in, in that situation, does he tell you some uncomfortable truths about 
either yourself or your team that you need to hear whatever that, that you, you know, is it that kind of relationship? Oh, well, we have that kind of relationship if, if, if we need to go there, but it, it hasn't, I mean, for, for him, it's been more of just, you know, helping him out. It's for us, it's having him around and, um, you know, we had a good conversation last night, just being able to talk through some things. And again, I, I think it's it's helpful for both. And it's just bouncing ideas and thoughts off of each other, experiences we've been through, you know. And so I'm just using that to uh, really help me as I go through this process. Matt, yesterday, uh, Roquan ticked off Justin at the yeah. moment. And I was wondering if you could break down the play from both players' perspective. Yeah, he, so Roe made a good play. He just shot up the middle and we he came on blocked. Um, up the middle, and it was a little shovel pass. And, you know, right now we're just experimenting different things, and uh, he made a good play. You know, there's not much. Ju Justin was, uh, you know, that that's a hard one to shovel pass and expect a guy to be shooting up the gap like that. And then Roquan to catch it and run. And we joked around uh, in, in watching film with the whole team together. We showed some highlights of practice, and we were teasing whether or not Justin was going to bring Roquan down. And I think it was 50-50. Yeah. To end practice. I mean, just in terms of, are you able to get the work done you need to get done in the team drills? Yeah. With so few guys and so many frontline guys. Sure. No, we, we are. Um, we just have to monitor how many of the reps because at some point these guys uh, have to be able to um, make sure we get hydrated, you know, where they are, how they feel. But they're doing a good job. And it's credit to these guys, man. They're the guys that are getting opportunities. There's no complaining. There's no griping about this or that. Uh, they're, they're mentally tough right now. And, and, Really, I mean, I think everyone kind of sees a big picture, but at the same point, there's zero panic, and guys are just playing. They're just out there playing. Matt, with so many guys out, we were kind of joking there about uh, Justin bringing Roquan down, but yeah. given that. Stay away. Yeah, but given how that play played out, I mean, there's not many quarterbacks that would chase Roquan. I mean, Roquan would be gone. Oh, yeah. 100% of the time. Yeah. In that situation. Not with Justin, though. No, Justin's going to get him, I think. But in practice, don't get him. Let them go. Just stay away. <laughs> With so many guys out sideline during practice, it's obviously giving opportunities for other guys. Have you given the team any type of message like about this is your opportunity, they don't come along very often, or is that just kind of assumed? I think it's assumed. They know that because they're in competition regardless of, <clears throat> you know, even if there's not per se that quote-unquote opportunity, they, they know they're competing. They're in training camp. we got 90 guys. We're going to have to cut it down. These guys are auditioning for so many other – teams that aren't going to make it. I do think, though, um, there is probably times where you can use some examples of players across the league. And it's not always the Tom Brady example, where Drew Bledsoe goes down, Tom Brady comes in. I mean, there's a lot of other examples um, where, you know, guys can go down and other guys take that opportunity and turn it into uh, a, a career. And, and so um, at some point, maybe we'll bring that up, but I think they understand it. Um, I was fortunate enough to be in Philadelphia with Michael Vick. Yeah. So Michael Vick was somebody that, you know, when he was in practice, he did his stuff and he, he did everything he was asked. But when he was on, on Sunday and I was on the sideline when he was playing, it was electric how he played. I mean, it was a different level. That was, that was, uh, that was crazy. So uh, that would be – I was fortunate. Anybody that coached Michael can say that. Uh, but Justin is again. You, you feel you feel that burst. That's what you feel. Like when he just watch you know watch his burst when he's throwing um, routes on air to the wideouts. Watch what happened. Watch that burst when he bursts from when that drill's done. And he burst down the other end of the field. I mean, you can see it. That's where you feel it. Sure. Uh, well, probably the biggest thing is those type of hits is just get down a little sooner. And that's sometimes that's hard when you're running the football more than others. Uh, but we talk about Michael Vick, and Michael will tell you, like the other day when Justin was in, in practice, you saw he made that scramble, and then what did he do? He slid, right, and very natural. And, and Michael Vick, I mean, he's one of the most gifted athletes ever in the history of this world, couldn't slide, didn't know how. So we had to get the slip and slide out. 
uh, in practice with Michael, and, and that's a true story. And Bill even confirmed it too when, when we left and he was there with Chip Kelly, they did it for Michael. But learning how to slide and not take a hit, that extra hit, and there's, a, there's, that, there's that timing element too because some guys, if you slide too late and they hit you, you know, even if it's a penalty, you're still getting hit. You know, we had one of those with Mitchell a few years ago, right? We lost him for a few weeks. So um, you got to be smart. That's where we got to educate him. Things happen a little faster. Don't be stupid. You know, get down when you get a chance. Matt, him being a baseball player, Matt, I mean, yeah. that helps, right? For sure. For sure. How has, uh, how has Alan Robinson helped the two new quarterbacks doing pretty different jobs? I mean, Andy Dalton and Justin Fields. How has he helped them transition into these roles? I, I think in, in a great way in the fact that this is um, – for, for Allen now, going into his fourth year with us, I think he's in really good shape right now. Number one, I'll start there. That has nothing to do with the quarterbacks. For him, he's in great shape. Um, his route running now, he's taking that to the next level, and he's putting it together with both quarterbacks. Uh, Andy made a throw the other day uh, that, that um, on a deep cross route that you know, A-Rod was pretty fired up about the way he threw it. And, and I think like when you have that connection with these guys, um, A-Rod's can say, tell these guys what he's seeing, what he's feeling, and now match it up with their footwork, their timing, et cetera. When you take that with Andy, who's been in this league for all these years, and he understands when the ball's got to get out, he's an anticipatory thrower. They can, they on their own can figure out this route and that route and understand, listen, I'm going to do this versus this coverage, get the ball out here. So that connection, so he's been more vocal um, than probably he has in the last three years right now, and that's a good thing. I love that. He's coming over in between plays and talking, and in the meeting rooms, he's asking questions. And so I think that's a – he really feels good with where he's at, and uh, I think we're growing in this offense. On the field, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like he has just absolute reliability about the routes and about yeah. where he's going to be. And there would never be any uncertainty or guessing for either of those quarterbacks about sure. whether Allen Robinson is going to be in the right spot. And I just think that would make everything easier. Huge. It's huge. And I think you're seeing that from a lot, not just A-Rob right now, but, but a lot of the guys. Some of the guys are learning. Um, the other guy, Mooney, right now is, is on fire with his route running. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's running some routes right now that I, that, that I really haven't seen him and A-Rob running those routes. And that's not to take away from these other guys. They're all doing great. But Mooney and A-Rob have been here, right? Mooney's second year, A-Rob's fourth year. They're understanding now the details of route running and what it means to stay on the time. And now they're putting their own little flavor on things, right? We always say don't run the lines. They're, they're, they're running the lines, but they're putting a little stuff on it, right? And it's getting them wide open, and you'll see it on tape. So I think that's the growth now. Um, sometimes wide receivers can run such great routes that it tricks the quarterback, you know, with what they do. And uh, they're not tricking the quarterback, you know? For, for Moody, what, what kind of difference are you laughing at? From last year? What's that? For, for Mooney, like, what kind of difference is that from like where he was last year? Well, it's it's more routes. It's more he's he's putting his own spin and um, stamp on certain more routes. Like last year, he had a couple routes where he was really good at. It's not like he just got good at He's all when we evaluated him, coaching staff personnel. When we evaluated him last year, we knew in the fifth round. I'm just telling you, we knew in the fifth round we were getting a steal. We knew it, and. Um, I think it's, it was probably our benefit that there was no combine, there was no bringing guys in, all that stuff. That helped the Chicago Bears out because we were all over him. And he's proven us so far to be what we thought he was because he works hard. He, 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 and, he, and the other thing is A-Rob's his mentor. So every, A-Rob's teaching him a lot of stuff, and that's to his credit for latching on to him. And, and now he's putting it out there on tape, and, and it's just uh, it's fun to see. you know. And, and he wants to keep growing. But watching those guys on tape right now, and not just those two guys, the rest of these guys, they're, they're really understanding what we want. And, we're, and we tell them at night, man, we're appreciative of you guys. Same with the tight ends. You know, Cole Komet's learning from Jimmy. Cole Komet's putting some great routes together right now. So, and then that's not even getting into the run game. Hey, it's a little more from that introduced you to, to Mooney in a previous practice. Was it Ryan? Was it Furry? How did you become aware of, you know, first time you were Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, you know, Ryan and his guys do such an awesome job at, you know, giving us the cloud of guys and looking for. And sometimes it's easier on the front end because you have these guys. But to, to all of us, to Ryan's staff, to, to Ryan, to, you know, all of his directors of personnel, um, they, they give us a cloud of guys. And, and they say, hey, check these guys out. And they did that with, with Mooney. And we start watching, and there's a clump of – there's a cloud of guys that you think are going to go in that round. And then we start watching them as coaches. 
and then not that we're right or wrong, but we'll say, hey, we really think this guy fits what we're looking to do, or we like this or we like that. And the one thing with Mooney was between personnel and between coaches, there was a there was a 100% consensus. And when you have that, that's probably where you get the conviction that you feel good. And then when you get together in, in, uh, in the off season, you kind of see it. And then the, the, for Mooney, it was Detroit, right? He had his first catch in Detroit. And we weren't sure was the game going to be too big, and the game wasn't too big. And from ever since, it's been arrow up. Matt, we haven't asked about Eddie Jackson really uh -huh. on camp. Is there, is there a thought that he may be back soon? And how soon do you need him back? This is a guy who's done it at a very high level, but do you need to get his feet underneath him? No, yeah, I, I don't know how soon he'll be back. Again, with the timeline, um, we'll, we'll get through that with Dre. But he's doing good. He's out there every day at practice doing his stuff with Dre. He's, he's out there with the camaraderie of the team. That's, it's important to me. It's important that he's out there with these guys every day, whether it's a walkthrough, whether it's practice. He's holding a script in his hand. He gets to see the coverages and talk. I am not worried one ounce about him if he needs reps or not. With your new corners, though? Yeah. There needs to be, you're not worried. No, about no, that. I'm not worried at all. Because he's, he's communicating to those guys. They're watching tape. They're getting extra tape together uh, during the time that we have in here at Hallis. And, um, you know, Eddie, Eddie's been playing this, this game for a little while. And I think the connection of having him and T. Gip back there, uh, Bush, these other guys, um, the biggest thing right now for us is let's make sure he's healthy. And, and in the end, ultimately, he needs to be ready week one. And I just don't, you know, I don't know when that's going to come, but he's working his tail off. No problem.